Marga and Manfred had their home in Burghaun at Ringstraße, where many Jewish families lived and where also the location of the synagogue was. Here you have a look at the Ring Street after November 1938. In the background you see the home of the Strauss family, house number 15. Most probably this lovely family photo was placed in the living room. It was taken in December 1920 when the grandparents Meyer and Malchen Strauss celebrated their golden wedding anniversary. The photo features them in the center surrounded by their grown-up children with their spouses, also five grandchildren and other family members. In the middle of the back row you see Abraham Strauss, the father of Marga and Manfred. Behind their house, the Strauss family had a nice yard. When the children wanted to go to the synagogue or the Jewish school, they usually slipped through that little gate in their yard and immediately they were here. The Burkhaun synagogue was the most beautiful one of the rural synagogues far and wide. This new place of worship had been consecrated in 1910. In the Ring Street was the location of the Jewish grade school as well, right next to the yard of the Strauss family. The classroom was left on the half-timbered side, whereas the teacher's apartment was on the right side of the building. In the background you see the roof of the synagogue. During their migration to the south, some stocks favored it as a resting place before moving on. The Jewish school had to close in 1933 due to the small number of students. Therefore, the Jewish students were evenly distributed among the Christian schools. That building still exists and is used by different local clubs and associations today. Father Abraham Strauss was a livestock broker by trade, a job which was common among the Jewish people in the countryside. He was born at Rotenkirchen, a little village close to Burghaun. He wrote the letter in the background to his eldest son, Fiber, who had been living in Palestine since summer 1936. Marga and Manfred had two older siblings named Fiber and Hertha. They were the children by Abraham's first wife, Fanny. This photo features her and little Fiber. Fanny died at an early age in 1924 of heart failure and she was buried at the Jewish cemetery in Burghaun. When big brother Fiber finished school, he learned the trade of a salesman with his uncle Leopold Strauss in Leipzig. After that, he was an apprentice of agriculture at the Jewish training farm Geringshof outside Fulda. This training farm prepared young Jews for their immigration to Palestine. After graduation from school, Hertha began an apprenticeship as a seamstress, but pretty soon her father couldn't afford any longer to pay for her training and Hertha had to earn her own money. She was able to find a job as a maid with a Jewish dentist in Frankfurt Main. In 1938, hardly 17 years of age, she fled to USA. Adelheid Strauss, mother of Marga and Manfred, was Abraham's second wife. She came from the large Stern family who had been living in Burghaun for generations. For the big siblings, Fiber and Hertha, she was a loving and caring second mother. This photo was taken shortly before Fiber left Burghaun in summer of 1936. The Nazis had been in power since 1933 
and they had already done the Jews a lot of injustice. That's why more and more Jewish people from Burkhaun fled abroad or sought shelter in bigger towns like Frankfurt, where nobody knew them. Abraham and Adelheid Strauss as well hoped they could follow their daughter Hertha to the USA one day. Marga and Manfred were still small children when during one night of March 1933 they experienced something terrible. A bunch of Nazis smashed all the windows of the house and what a frightening noise it was. A few days later one could read a report in the Fulda News. The headline was Violence in Burghaun. Together with the Christian students, Marga started school in the spring of 1934. Although Marga was a good student, it wasn't always easy for her in that Christian school. The Jewish girls and boys were quite often bullied, and it has even been told that occasionally after school they would be followed and beaten up by the other kids. In April of 1937, Manfred started school too. Had he been looking forward to his first day in school? His time as a first grader lasted for half a year only. The reason? The Nazis were not willing to tolerate the Jewish children in Christian schools. Therefore, they established a separate one in the building of the former Jewish school in the Ring Street. All the Jewish kids from the district of Burkhaun had to go there now. Thus, every day Marga and Manfred walked through that little gate in their yard over to the Jewish district school, past the synagogue, the favorite resting place of the storks. Here they were still granted some time of undisturbed learning with their teacher Mr. Adler until something terrible happened in November 1938. Still, the synagogue was standing intact at its place. However, in the night of horrors of November 9 to November 10, hell broke loose in Ringstraße. The local police force was barely able to prevent hate-filled Burkhauners from entering the Jewish homes by force. Marga and Manfred must have suffered from fear of death. At daybreak, Nazis gone wild smashed the entire interior of the Jewish school, and then they threw tables and pews into the neighboring synagogue, dousing everything with gasoline. At 10 a.m., Marga and Manfred watched with horror as their beautiful synagogue burst into flames and burned out entirely. Who knows, maybe they fled from their house together with mum. Embers flew across and thick smoke penetrated through the broken windows. Remember that the Nazis had smashed all the windows the night before. To make matters worse, Dad had been arrested. At 7 a.m. he and the other Jewish men had been thrown into jail and subsequently transported to the concentration camp Buchenwald. After this monstrous pogrom, many Jews fled Germany. Even Manfred had the opportunity to escape with a Kindertransport. However, their dad, who in the meantime had been released from Buchenwald, didn't want his family to be torn apart more than it already had been. Thus, they remained in Burkhaun, hoping to be able to flee together one day. For Marga and Manfred, daily life had changed dramatically. The classroom in school was totally demolished, so the teacher Mr. Adler continued teaching only the few students from Burkhaun in their homes so that they would not forget everything they had learned. The Nazis enacted more and more laws and prohibitions and little by little 
that took all the civil rights away from them. As of January 1, 1939, Marga had to bear the additional first name Sarah and Manfred the name Israel in order to be recognized as Jews immediately. The Sabbath and the holidays couldn't be observed according to the religious law any longer, for everything was lacking. The beautiful synagogue was a pile of rubble, and one had to meet for services in private homes. Nothing at all was like it used to be. As of September 1, 1941, Jews were only allowed to leave their town of residence in emergencies. In order to do so, they needed a written permit issued by the local police. Additionally, they were forced to wear a special sign of ID, the so-called Judenstern. Marga and Manfred too had to wear this star on their outfits. Only occasionally did they leave the house now. The few things that they were still allowed to shop for, they had to get early in the morning at Zell's store prior to the arrival of non-Jewish customers. Father Abraham was forbidden by Nazi law to do business as a livestock dealer, so money for the daily livelihood was very scarce. After Germany started World War II in September 1939, there was hardly any opportunity left to escape from Germany. The borders were closed, and furthermore, in order to flee to a safe haven abroad, one had to have well-to-do sponsors and money to boot. Neither Abraham Strauss nor Hertha or Fiber could come up with a sponsor or money. Thus, Marga, Manfred, and their parents had to try to hold out in Bokhaun. All but the Strauss and the Stern families were being carried off on December 8, 1941, to concentration camps way down east. Then, on September 5, 1942, it happened. Marga and Manfred too were forced to leave their hometown. With some carry-on baggage guarded by police officers, they walked together with their parents and the Stern family through town to the Bokhaun railroad station. They had to board the four o'clock train, as people called it, and their destination was the reception camp at Kassel. Two days later, they were being carried off to the concentration camp Theresienstadt together with many other fellow victims. In that giant Theresienstadt ghetto, the Strauss family lived for about half a year under most dismal circumstances. Margas, Manfreds and their parents' last traces lead to Auschwitz. One can find their names on a transport list dated January 29, 1943, leaving Theresienstadt with final destination, Death Camp Auschwitz. Marga was wrongly listed as Martha. In Auschwitz, all of them were being murdered. Abraham and Adelheid Strauss, together with their children Marga and Manfred. Fiber and Hertha could save their lives from Nazi terror. In June 2005, Hertha visited Bokhaun with daughter Alette, granddaughter Faith, and son-in-law Ralph Magin. In 1957, Fiber came back to Germany and was living as a single retiree in Frankfurt. About twice a year he came to see the graves of his grandparents and his mother Fanny at the Jewish cemetery in Burkhaun. Several times I paid him a visit at his home in Frankfurt. During tea time he told me of his family's life and passed the family photos on to me. After a short and bad illness he died in Frankfurt in the hospital on June 15, 2003.
I wrote down this story of Marga and Manfred to commemorate what had happened with them and with all the other Jewish children and families during that horrible Nazi period.